Welcome back here with Money, Money, Money. It's done, it's a week, and we've been discussing with Gaurav Mashruwala the various methods in which you can actually give back to society the due that we all owe, and give back we must. So, Gaurav, we've spoken at length about philanthropy, right? Uh, what about charity or donation? Many times when we actually set out to give, uh, we discover that... Uh, you know, our help doesn't reach those it's intended for. So what's the kind of groundwork that we really need to do to find an NGO or an organization where our interests are aligned? Okay, let's tough part. To be honest, because there are loads of them, uh, some registered, recognized, some not, number one. Number two, some of them are uh, just the sourcing agency. So they would collect money and then they would in turn be giving it to smaller agencies mm. who would be doing the groundwork. Now it's a call that you need to take. What do you want to do? So first is that there are a couple of websites like Know Your NGO and I think there are one or two others which gives only the information about lots and lots of NGOs. So they would have listed down the activities those NGOs do their balance sheets, how much money is used for administration, mm -hmm. how much money is actually used for the cause, the kind of projects that they have done. But whenever you're giving it to an NGO, ask them for a report. All NGOs which are registered have to have that report. And it's not very difficult to get it, just that people don't know, so they don't ask. And those reports are not very technical. So apart from balance sheet, which you can keep it aside, but the notes that you will read, you will come to know first, what is the eventual aim? Is it that they are collecting money, which is fine. There are some of them who are brilliant at collecting money and then giving it to smaller NGOs who will do groundwork. If you want to do that, do that. The second option is that check out of that money that's been collected and there'll be information given how much is used for administration, paying salaries and how much is the actual work that's mm -hmm. happening. Now, there are two thoughts to it. There are some which says that look, we are pure, purely collecting large amount of money, we hire very qualified people, so they make an optimum use. Now there the administrative expenses could be 40, 50, 60 percent, only 40 percent is being used, but according to them they are doing brilliant work. There are some where the pay scales and everything is very, very less, but the huge amount of money is actually reaching. Now it's not good or bad, it's just that be aware of them. Hmm. Also look at whether they are recognized or not, number one. If you are really very keen, and if it's a charitable institution, then you can even go to charity commissioner, file for an RTI, and get the information. But I don't think many people are going to do that. But if you want to, you can. If you go to charity commissioner's office and say, so-and-so charitable trust, this is the number, and please give me the information, you get that information. So there are various ways. You can even go and visit the NGO. You can say the place where you're working, we want to come and pay uh, a visit to that place. You'll have to do some groundwork if you want to be sure. Alternatively, there are some big ones, really big ones, which has been doing work for very, very, like Ram Krishna Mission is the one name that comes to my mind. Christian missionaries have been doing a lot of work. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure Madrasa and all, they are also doing good amount of work. There are a couple of temple trusts which does good work. Now, then it gets into religion. So, without yeah. naming which is good or bad, it's just that take that call mm. as to what you want to do. But see the kind of work that they're doing and that will give you an idea. And if you don't have time, then I said look at these websites and get information. Okay, but what happens if one finds that they're not satisfied uh, with the way the money has been utilized? Is there some way I can go for a recourse? Uh, no, once you're given the money, you cannot be donating or doing charity on conditional basis. You've just given it. So then... That's no, if I find that the money has not been utilized at all for charitable purposes. So yes, if you're saying that the initial cause and the, the articles and memorandum of the trust or the trust lead of the trust or if whatever way it's formed said this has to be used for so and so purpose yep. and if you find out misuse, obviously you can go to charity commissioner if it's a company which has been formed, you can go to registrar of company, you can lodge complaints, mm. you can even go to income tax department and file a complaint because they would have tax benefits. Oh yeah, there are enough legal recourses that you can take, that's perfectly fine. And then lodge a complaint and say please get me information. For all these you can file an RTI and get information, there are many RTI activists who are doing wonderful work. In fact, most of them don't even charge 
charge when you go and tell them, look, I want information mm. about an NGO. So those resources you have. So if you have the inclination and if you have the time, then yes, you can do it. Okay, so you spoke also about uh, some of the formalized bigger institutions, there are government institutions. As well, we all know that there are local NGOs who are actually doing, uh, you know, grassroots uh, uh, level kind of work. Um, between these three, which do experts recommend? I mean, if a client was to come to you for help, what would be your recommendation about which of these? I would leave it to the individual, to be honest, because end of the day, if you are not mm -hmm. feeling contented, then uh, it's difficult. If I have to kind of decide on behalf of somebody, just because it's not my own resources or if I'm advising, mm. then I would advise them to go with an established one. Because then probably I personally am playing little safe as in professional saying mm. that, look, these are proven one. I know that I have personally visited them because I guess some client is doing or somebody is doing it and I know their work, I have seen their reports and all, then I would look at an established one. But whether it's from an individual perspective, do where you get mental peace, you, you, mm -hmm. you are at calm with it. So finally to wrap it up, what are the tax advantages for an individual who actually is looking to step up their uh, philanthropy? One is that some of these qualify under Section 80G where you get 50% deduction and there are some research and development institutions where you get 100% deduction. They will give you a certificate from Department of Income Tax. The certificate will be there, certificate will have validity. Their PEN card details, the PEN details would be there. They will ask for your PEN card, they'll issue a proper receipt. Just ensure that you check that the certificate which has been issued is valid because income tax doesn't give a perpetual validity. It gives year on year or there's a specific period. So ensure that when you donate it, that certificate was valid and that's perfectly fine. Gaurav, thanks very much for actually joining in and advising all our viewers. And viewers, we really hope that you'll take this as an opportunity to actually go out and give back to society. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We need to take a very quick break, but we'll come back with that tip of the week. Stay tuned.